management. As of this taping, no one has been charged with the murder of his brother, Dennis. I'm Tamron Hall. Thank you for watching Someone They Knew. Icon Johnny Depp married Amber Heard, a young actress he met while filming a movie together. When they were not away shooting movies, they lived in a penthouse apartment in downtown LA. The apartment was in the Eastern Columbia building, but Johnny owned more than one penthouse apartment and his childhood friend Ike Baruch lived in one of those units. One day you're in your mother's garage selling paintings for a hundred dollars two hundred dollars three hundred dollars on ebay next thing you know you get you it's an art show and like you don't have to worry about deadly squad and now six years after moving out barouche was in the courtroom with both johnny and amber describing what he witnessed mr depp was drunk would you agree yeah you recall that mr depp was accusing amber of sleeping with somebody right there was somebody else in the room with her and that's what they were arguing about tonight we are live in fairfax county virginia where exes johnny depp and amber heard are suing each other for millions of dollars and listening to their friend and former neighbor tell the jury what was going on behind closed doors <sighs> I'm Vinny Politan. Great to have you with us tonight here in Closing Arguments. We're live in Fairfax County, Virginia, the site of the trial. Two Hollywood stars going at it, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. But I want to begin the program tonight with a quote from a song from one of the iconic rap trios of all time. Houdini. Houdini had a song called Friends. And one of the lyrics from that song, Friends, was friends. How many of us have them? Friends, ones we can depend on. And that's a big, big theme in that courthouse behind me today. All about friendship. And how many people have friends? You know, you know the friends I'm talking about, friends like I grew up with. My best friends in the world are the ones that I grew up with in New Jersey. We were kids together. Now we talk to each other, text all the time. Something goes wrong. Any one of us can call another one and we'll be there. Whatever, whatever you need. You don't even have to ask. We'll just do it. I mean, those are the kinds of friends. But how far would you go for one of those friends? Would you lie for one of your friends? And there are different kinds of lies, right? You can tell a little white lie, maybe cover up for something that they shouldn't have been doing or help them out on a, on a job reference or something. And then there are bigger lies, much more serious lies, like lying to investigators or swearing to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, going inside a courthouse and committing perjury. Would you do that? Would you do that for a friend? Well, let me tell you about what happened inside the courtroom today, because Johnny Depp on trial called one of his best friends in the world to the stand. His name is Ike, Isaac Ike. Obviously from New York, I heard the accent, um, and he testified, and, and he was testifying for Johnny Depp. And, and the question uh, for this jury really is, um, was he telling the truth, right? Because he got on the stand and he was talking uh, about Amber Heard, and he was accusing her of lying about domestic violence. Basically proving to this jury, if they believe him, exactly what he's accusing her of lying about the nature of what was going on inside that house, lying about Johnny Depp being someone who commits domestic violence. It's a big issue, huge issue in this case. So let, let me tell you a little bit about Ike Isaac Baruch, because this guy 
in some sense, he was a character witness because he talked about his friend Johnny, Johnny Depp, and what a great guy he was. But more than a character witness, he was a character. And, and that's important, not just because he was entertaining folks inside the courtroom today, but because if you're a witness and it's about your credibility, you want the jury to believe you, right? Johnny Depp's attorneys obviously want the jury to believe him, but you as a witness, you're getting up there, you're swearing to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. You want the jury to believe you. And part of that is connecting with the jury and being someone that they like. A, a jury is much more likely to believe someone they like than someone that they dislike. And let me tell you what happened inside that courtroom today. <laughs> this guy, Ike, uh, I came out, I like Ike, okay? And it's, it's not, I'm not making any determination of what the truth is in this case, but I like the guy. And part of it probably was the New York background and the personality he brought on the stand, but it was also his attitude, his demeanor, just the way he was. So rather than me describe him for you, let me show you a little bit of, of Johnny Depp's good friend taking over that courtroom today. He didn't buy any paintings there. Instead, he offered me a complete patronship. So what did you understand he meant by um, becoming your patron? Well, he was going to financially make it possible for me to just paint every day and put together a body of work so that way then it could be sold. Did you take him up on that offer to live at the Eastern Columbia building? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and uh, how did that make you feel? I started crying. Is you know, one day, uh, one day you're in your mother's garage selling paintings for a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars on eBay. Next thing you know, you get you it's an art show, and like you don't have to worry about deadly squat. Of course, of course, uh, I was I was flipping out. When did you move into the Eastern Columbia building? The next day after we met and we talked. The next day. And here I am in front of this building. This is a beautiful building. This is like, you know, it's whatever, 13 floors, but it's like from the 1930s, some Art Deco, beautiful building. And I'm looking, I'll go, all right, this is unreal. What, there's gonna be, you know, all right, it's gonna be one of these apartments or whatever, one of these places here. I go in with uh, Kevin Murphy. He takes me all the way up to the roof. We go, we go to, uh, into penthouse two, and this, I walk in, and I'm like crying, going, this is, a, it's beautiful. This is like a, a mansion uh, situation to me. We decided, okay, like 25 pieces of work, large scale, and, I, and Johnny says, hey, what, how long do you think this will take? I said, I've never done it before. I don't know, maybe a few months. And were you able to comp complete the paintings in the in a few months? No, it's, it's after it took me to, to in order to make two large scale paintings. It took me like uh, to almost two months. And did you develop a relationship uh, with the defendant in this case, Miss Hurd? Yeah. And did you get along with Miss Hurd? I loved her. I fell in love with her, just like Johnny fell in love with her. I fell in love with her. She's. Uh, uh, totally respectful, gracious to me, uh, that she's got great teeth, uh, that she treated me with complete respect. As I walked in, and she's in the kitchen at the counter, and she's doing a beauty facial mask, and uh, so she can't offer me. And I'm going, hey, is that something that can help me? And she looked at me, and she goes, no. <laughs> and that... And I'm laughing, and then she laughed after because she didn't realize she was making a joke. Amber Heard was smiling there. That's Johnny's good friend. I mean, he was friends with her as well, but it's a witness for Johnny Depp. You saw he took control of that courtroom. Let me bring in Court TV uh, legal correspondent Chanley Painter, who is uh, with us here outside the courthouse. Unbelievable the and way... he got great teeth. Now, thank you, thank you, but... <laughs> This guy, I yes. mean, bigger than life, bigger than bigger life. Bigger than life, so relatable. Uh, he came across genuine and real and said a lot of things maybe people were thinking and was comfortable on the witness stand. I mean, you could hear the audience or the gallery laughing along with him, Johnny laughing. 
Amber cracking a smile. The jury sees all of that. Now, the judge wasn't quite as amused by his antics, but definitely the star witness, one of the most memorable witnesses on court TV that I've been a part of, maybe my favorite, Benny. It, it's like, you know, he, he was like doing a one-man show up there, you know? And he had the lines, the zingers. It was natural. Mm -hmm. It wasn't forced. Um, I, I can't imagine some, what they, they might not like it, I don't know, but I can't imagine someone saying, eh, I don't like that guy. You, you, you don't like him. Right, you like him, and like you said, you because you like him, you listen to what he's saying, maybe you believe him a little bit more, and he openly admitted his love for Amber Heard, which a lot of times, witnesses who may seem biased may not, they may hesitate to show affection for the other side. He didn't, and that makes him maybe even more credible. What, what, a, what a character, witness, and character. <laughs> let's, let's bring in our other guests who are joining us tonight. Kyla Coleman is back with us, criminal defense attorney, family law attorney. That's like the perfect combination uh, for this case. And also with us, John Delatore, forensic psychologist. He's in San, Ant San Antonio, Texas. Uh, great to have you both here. Great to see you. Um, uh, Kyla, let me start with you. Um, this witness, how important... How, well, first of all, do you like Ike? Let me ask you. Yeah, I mean, I think he's doing a great job. The one thing that I like about him is that he's relatable. I mean, who doesn't want to be a good friend to a celebrity? Um, he's sitting in a position that a lot of people maybe in the jury want to be in one day. He's not using big words. He has a very open posture. Um, he's very believable. And I mean, the jury at the end of the day has the job to weigh the credibility of a witness. And I think that he's very credible at this point. John, th this is a guy who was just like kind of like laying it out there, um, very relatable, someone who I, I feel like I know him. You know, he's just testifying in court, but I feel like I know him. Yeah, absolutely. And it goes to show what kind of relationship that he has with uh, Johnny Depp. And I think that's key here because part of me also, when I when I experience all of that he's talking about when he's on the stand uh, testifying, a part of me views him as sort of like the court jester, right? The, the king's fool, right? That he's the guy that's going to tell all of these stories to distract from whatever it else, uh, you know, some important thing that needs to be happening. He's, he's there to bring levity to the seriousness of the situation. Absolutely. The other part of it is, is he, he humanized Johnny Depp. Like, he's a movie star, but Johnny Depp's friends with this guy. Johnny Depp is good friends with this guy for life, and he's like a regular guy. To me, that, that's an important part of all this. All right. Now, he had important testimony uh, besides just, you know, kind of ingratiating himself to everyone who was watching. He also spoke, though, about Amber Heard and, you know, his thoughts about the accusations that she's made. Let's take a listen to part of that. I think you testified already you're pretty angry with Ms. Hurd, right? I, when? I, I wrote it down that you Oh, are... about all the phony, about the phony pictures what? that were that were taken and put in uh, tabloids and about the fake narrative and about uh, and the way she's uh, try, uh, at trying to got a... Uh, a, a, a fraudulent DV claim to extort and blackmail uh, a man. Uh, yeah, that kind of got me uh, uh, pretty frustrated, angry confused, angry, upset. Yes, which is why I said the best thing for us to do is not to talk to each other. Okay. And, yes. And was it fair to say you're still angry with her? Oh, you know something. It's six years. But it's we just heard you give your version. Am I angry anymore? I'm not, you know, I, what I am is tired. And I want this all to end. Her to go heal, him to go heal. So, you know, you, the, it, it, so many people are, have been affected by this malicious lie that she started and she created, and it's gone out the door and around the world. And so I don't need, I, I can't even paint anymore. I've stopped painting for the last who knows how many years, and that's affected by stuff. It's, it's, it, I don't, I, I'm not angry at anybody. I want the best for her, for her to take her responsibility, heal, and, 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 and move on. I told you, folks. I mean, and the way he turned that, Chanley, was amazing because this is cross-examination. They're going yeah. after him, trying to pin it. You don't like her anymore. And then all of a sudden, ah, six years. It was six <laughs> years ago, Chanley. Exactly. He 
spellbound. The defense attorney, to the point that she didn't interrupt, let him just rail against Amber Heard. He also is kind of playing this uh, advice, you know, friend who gives advice, move on with your life. It's been six years, and it's just... I've so never, I've, I've one of my faves. Never seen anything like this before. Uh, Kyla Coleman, that was cross examination. That was, that was the witness winning cross examination. Yeah, that was a little odd for me because as a defense attorney and family law attorney, it's my show when I go on cross-examination. I am asking very controlled questions. I'm not going to let somebody get up there and just get you away with You can't control I, Kyla. You're not going <laughs> to control I. Nobody controls. When he's in the courtroom, he's in charge. No, he should have kind of narrowed the scope of it a little bit because he had a chance to save himself. If the question would have just been, are you still angry with her? And it was a yes or no answer and he got in there and got out, it would have been okay. But now Ike has had a chance to redeem himself by saying, hey, I just want both parties to heal. I'm the peacemaker here. And he kind of redeemed himself a lot with that. John Del Toro, I want you to kind of chime in here on, on, on this man as a witness. You get to a, a, a bit of his personality, the way he takes control. Is that the kind of person people tend to believe you can like someone, but ultimately in a courtroom, it's about believing someone. You know, it's not only about that, but it's about the attitude of the jury as well. Where do they come from? What kind of people do they like to be around? And he's absolutely, he's so charming, right? He's so quick-witted, right? He's definitely someone that you want to be around day to day, you know, that to have, to interact with on a positive basis. And and for the for the most part, I think some people will absolutely uh, view him as probably the most credible witness that they'll hear. But then there are other people that might be a little bit turned off by this, right? That you have to understand the jury as it's moving along, as the testimony is going to figure out, okay, well, who do I put up next to make sure that I keep uh, the jury on my side? Yeah, I almost feel like he's going to be at my next high school reunion, like I graduated with him. I don't know. That's just me. All right, folks, we're here all night long. Our guests are staying with us. But when we come back, yes, it's a beautiful night in Fairfax, Virginia, right? Johnny Depp leaving the courtroom today. Not his first libel case, though. Not his first. There was one over in the U.K. When we come back, there's a journalist from overseas who is here, covered the first trial, and he's covering the second one. How do they compare? You'll find out next.
actor Johnny Depp, who was hoping a British court would help restore his image and kickstart his career, instead was dealt a major blow by a judge, dismissing his claims against a British tabloid. Depp sued The Sun for libel after a 2018 article called him a wife beater, but Justice Andrew Nicholl of the High Court of England sided with the newspaper, saying what they published was, quote, substantially true. So Johnny Depp was on trial in England suing The Sun. He lost that one. It wasn't against Amber Heard, but she was a big part of the trial. As a matter of fact, she flew overseas to testify and then spoke to folks outside of the courthouse. I traveled here to the UK to testify as a witness to assist the court. After obtaining a restraining order in 2016, and finalizing my divorce, I just wanted to move on with my life. I did not file this lawsuit. And despite its significance, I would have preferred not to be here in court. So that was trial number one for Johnny Depp. This is trial number two, but the, the trial overseas, no cameras inside the courtroom, right? It's not the United States. And I was in the United States, so I didn't see the trial. Good news for you tonight. We have someone who was there for all of it. He joins us tonight from England, but is here covering this trial. Nick Wallace, journalist from overseas. Great to see you, Nick. Hey, Vinny. Thanks very much Thank for having me in the beautifully appointed Court TV gazebo. Exactly. It's, an honor. it's beautiful here. So... What your first impressions of, of the difference between what's happening here in Fairfax County, Virginia versus what happened over in England? It's on telly. It's on telly over here, and that, that's the main difference. And there are really strict rules on what journalists can do in the court behind us compared to England. We were allowed to live tweet, which is how I, I, I found So you were in the courtroom? I was in the courtroom. Tweeting away? Well, we had an overflow courtroom, which was in the same way they've got an overflow courtroom here. So we weren't in the main court because it was in the middle of the pandemic. Oh, that's right. And that was, that was one of the reasons that my live tweets started to get... I was getting 10 million page impressions a day from my tweets because no American journalists could come over to the UK right. to cover the trial. So I became the only source of blow-by-blow -blow information about what was going on to a huge audience across the pond and, and all around the world who, because it wasn't televised, didn't know what was going on. So I just sort of idly lied to... Because in, in England, we're allowed to do it without having to ask permission of the judge. Right. You can just rock up into court and just start live tweeting check your emails and you know as long as you don't yeah. make phone there, there calls are some, uh, there are some courtrooms in the united states where you can do that this yeah no 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 this well, is not one of them i read up about yeah, this because yeah. i was hoping i'd get to do it here but yeah. no but yeah so i just we got cameras we got the telly for you so well, this is the thing but yet the rules on what everyone else can do apart from the cameras are really strict you you're not allowed to take any electronic devices into court other than a phone and we've had deputy sheriffs in there telling us that if they see us with a phone we'll be ejected from court and not allowed to come back for the rest of the trial and we might deport you well, that could, that could be on that, the cars. That could happen to that you, That could Nick. be on the cars. All right, visa could be cancelled, <laughs> and I'll be off out. In, in terms of what's happening, though, on the witness stand and the testimony and the lawyers, uh, how would you compare the two cases? Is Johnny Depp's case basically the same? Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's just that the jurisdiction is different, and that's why he's suing her here, saying that the, the article that she wrote in the Washington Post defamed him in the same way that he said the Sun article in, in the, it, written by Dan Wooten was also defamatory. The key thing about that UK trial was that he lost a single... But, this, see, this is the big, big difference between okay. the two. A single judge made that decision. We don't have jury trials for libel in the UK anymore. They stopped in around 2013 for reasons that are, that are unclear. So one single judge, Mr Justice Nicholl, decided that Johnny Depp essentially was a wife beater, that the son's allegations were substantially how about, true. But how about people overseas? You're getting a lot of, of response online to, to everything. Do, do, do people believe in that first trial? Do, it, what do you was, know what? It made me realise just how famous Johnny Depp is. I mean, I knew he was a big film star, but his audience, because his body of work has, you know, he's been famous for 40 odd years now, hasn't he? And so there are millions of fans all over the world who don't want to believe that he could be a monster. And I mean, you were discussing the evidence that we heard in court right. yesterday. Well, actually, it wasn't evidence, was it? It was submissions by uh, the attorneys about what we're going to hear in evidence later right. on in the trial. Now, <laughs> if what they are saying is true, then he is a monster. 
but if what he's saying, if what you know, if if Amber Heard is lying, then this 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 is why this trial is so fascinating. The cultural fault lines that that, that move right down the middle of it. It's not just the justice system, not just the Me Too movement. It, it's it, it's so much is going on here, and so. I don't know how relevant people see the UK trial as being, but it's a big deal in the UK because now anyone in the UK can call Johnny Depp a wife beater. Right, right. Regardless of what happens. Regardless in this court, of what happens. What happens here. here. So, the witness we saw today um, was fascinating. Johnny Depp's friend, Isaac Baruch. Yeah. What a man. Unbel now, did did he appear yes. in the first trial? Yeah. And was he the same kind of guy who like took oh, over and was so doing a one man show? Well, he was beamed in live from LA and I don't know whether you've ever been to the High Court in London it's this gothic palace built in the 19th century it's very staid and very fusty and people wear wigs and gowns and then suddenly you had this this incredible Brooklyn accent with this full wattage personality just beamed into court and he was exactly like he was, he was. today and, and and his evidence was consistent with the evidence that he gave today he loves Johnny very much for understandable reasons because Johnny's looked out for him and looked after him and he's convinced that Amber Heard is making all her allegations up. But it wasn't so much his opinion or his thoughts on whether Amber Heard was wearing makeup or not, which we heard a lot about today. It was just his genuine full bore personality and yet only 60 or 70 people witnessed it in right. London because right. we didn't televise it. And I remember seeing him today and thinking, a star is born. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, powerful. All right, how about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard? Um, how they are comporting themselves here in the United States versus uh, overseas? Well, crucially, we haven't heard them speak they haven't in the witness stand. Yet, right. yeah, no, because uh, Johnny Depp was on. We had the first day of opening statements, like you did here back in London, and then Johnny Depp was on the stand for four days. Um, and in England, we have a slightly different system in that you don't get examined by your own attorney. You get immediately, aggressively cross-examined right by the, the opposition attorney. So we were getting really, really aggressive exchanges from the the um, uh, uh, the, the NGN newspaper uh, uh, council. We call it. And how did there. Johnny handle that? I thought he handled it with. Does he remain calm? Does he get calm? Him out of equanimity. I mean, the only time he seemed to perhaps not give the answers that he would have wanted to give was at the end of eight hours worth of questioning during right. the day he was visibly tired but he no he was he was charm personified he's a very charismatic man and uh, you know we were shown videos of him slurring his words and and heard evidence of of what sounded like horrendous experiences of drug taking and alcohol abuse but he was clean and sober as far as I could make out, and very on point and very polite when he was answering questions. As to be fair, was Amber Heard. They are both very charismatic people. You know, they're not Hollywood stars for no reason. Right, right. They are not just pretty faces. They are sharp, charismatic people who can fill a room with their own charisma. And, and Johnny Depp came across like that. Amber Heard, very, very bright woman, very sharp. When she was, uh, she was often ahead of the, the, the QC that was the Queen's Counsel, the barrister, the okay. equivalent of the attorney that, that was um, cross examining her. She was on top of her brief and very good at answering questions. They both were. But the judge decided that she was telling the truth and Johnny Depp was a wife beater. Okay. Before we run out of time tonight, we want to have you back during this trial, obviously. I'd love to. Um, I'm going to have to get you to do an interview, though, for my podcast. If absolutely, that's right. absolutely. On the park bench. We don't have a well-appointed gazebo. We've got a park bench over there. Okay. On the park the bench, not on. a problem. <laughs> not a problem. Uh, your thoughts about the jury? Young men, it looks like. It's, what is it? It's eight men and three women. Yeah. Yeah, which is an interesting split, isn't yeah. it? I mean, the... Because the, um, all, the, all both, the people in the gallery are women. All the gallery's all women. All Johnny Depp's fans. Yeah, pretty much, isn't it? But the... Um, and both both sides have a veto on on, on who these uh, jurors are, and they, they have to come to an agreement pretty quickly over the course of a day, working with the judge to get... Um, someone who they believe will give an honest opinion. I have to say, I've never witnessed jury selection before on Monday, and I thought it would be tedious. It was fascinating. Seeing the process of the American judicial system where people clearly bend over backwards to be fair, I thought that was a sharp contrast with what we had in the UK where we've got one judge, and a very experienced judge who wrote the book on libel right, law in the UK. Right, but he's a professional. And he's a professional, but it's one person. And here, seeing two... Uh, two teams working out with the judge how to get 11 neutral people in that courtroom was, was fascinating and, and I, I felt uh, comforted that they are going to come up with the right verdict when they, when, they, when they eventually do at the end of this trial because 
the effort that went into making sure there was very little scope, if any at all, for any sort of bias. All right. Nick Wallace, great stuff. Um, you're coming back, Thank right? Thank you very We're much. I'd love to. Lock him in. <laughs> lock him in throughout the trial. Great to see you. Uh, when we come back, folks, we got a lot to get to uh, here. Wow, what a day. What a day in Fairfax County, Virginia. We've got more. Don't go anywhere. Main Street in downtown Fairfax City, which is just a couple blocks from the courthouse where Johnny Depp is. And you know, this jury is full of young people, so what I want to do is talk to some young people hanging out over here at the DeClue Coffee and Sandwich Shop. There's a really big trial taking place, like one block over. Have you heard of it? No. 
Neither have I. Have you heard of someone named Johnny Depp? Yes. Yeah. I haven't been leaning towards one side, but I do think in the grand scheme of things, it's really unfair that Warner Brothers fired Johnny Depp, but did not fire him, Amber Heard for the same exact allegations. You can only know so much that happens behind closed doors, and it's very interesting. It's a very interesting case. I mean, obviously, I think that it's very important for women to stick together and for women to support. If we're saying that there's abuse going on, I think that we need to give leniency and we need to make space for that argument to come out. Um, I don't know the ins and outs. I don't know that anybody does. So I think the only people that are equipped to have a judgment are the people that are sitting in that courtroom and listening to both sides. That being said, I would assume that Amber is speaking from a place of truth. Abuse is extremely serious. Um, and taking people that have been in an abusive situation seriously and listening to their point of view and understanding what happened is critical for all of us to move forward as a society. This is a case where he's accusing her of abusing him, she's accusing him of abusing her. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I think that sometimes that can happen. Um, you know, it may seem unconventional, especially with, um, you know, so many people have come out, uh, like I guess Me Too movement has come out, and so I guess that can happen on, on both sides. And I guess I had seen some of her videos, and she seems to be a very volatile personality, so. One can imagine uh, something like that happening between them, or, or I think she'd even admitted to it. Um, so, I don't know. I think that at the end of the day, what's important is that, uh, I don't know, stuff like this gets smoothed out. And, like, you know, this shouldn't be us versus them or one side versus the other, but, but maybe uh, something where maybe we learn to get along a little better and, and people take time to understand each other and not get into these volatile or provoking situations. Well, we are in one of those situations, and it's it's extremely personal inside the courtroom. But ultimately, it's going to be the jury's going to decide what happened. Chanley Painter, Court TV legal correspondent, right next to me here outside the courthouse in Fairfax County, Virginia. Uh, did tell you us bring about us this jury. Some of those chocolate croissants, by the way. I did not, where are they? I didn't grab them. They look so <laughs> yes. good, but it'll be open tomorrow. Don't worry. Okay, great. This jury. They're young. Yes, very young. In fact, I'm concerned one is not even 18. He looks so young. One of these young men, but he, of course he has to be to be on this jury. But Vinny, eight men, eight men, three women, and maybe three or four could be over 50, maybe. 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 But, I mean, it really shocked me when I walked inside that yeah. courtroom and saw them. They, they were extreme. It was almost like it was like a, we were on spring break or something with all these young guys <laughs> in, in, on the jury. Let's bring back in our other guests. Uh, still with us, Kyla Coleman, John Delatore. John Delatore, forensic psychologist. Kyla Coleman, criminal defense attorney, family law attorney. Uh, John, let me ask you, um, is there a difference in, in the way this situation will be perceived by a young man versus a young woman? Yeah, it's certainly possible. And, you know, it depends on the sort of culture in which the individual grew up in, right? If there was someone who grew up in a culture in which Johnny Depp played a huge role because of Pirates of the Caribbean, maybe 21 Jump Street if they're that old, right? If they grew up in that kind of culture, it's certainly possible that they would lean towards Johnny Depp. If someone, however, grew up in a, in a culture in which uh, the Me Too movement played a, a larger role and they grew up maybe in single mother households where, you know, feminine uh, power, you know, female power, and stuff like that, they can absolutely lean towards uh, Amber Heard in this situation. So it's 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 a unique jury, and I very curious one for for this uh, for this trial. Absolutely, but did you hear John there, folks? He said, "If you're that old and remember 21 Jump Street, <laughs> I remember 21 Jump Street, but I guess I am that old." <laughs> Kyla, you don't remember 21 Jump Street, but let me ask you: I don't. Um, who is Johnny Depp happy with this jury? I mean, I look at I his fans, he, it's women of all ages. I look at the jury, it's young guys. Now, I think this is an, uh, an interesting jury for sure. Um, 
when you have eight men on the jury, I would wonder if they have ever experienced domestic violence, if they have negative experiences towards men who have been abused. Because we do know that there is a stigma sometimes when a man has said, hey, a woman's put her hands on me. They kind of look down on that man sometimes, which is very unfortunate. Um, but eight young men at that, I think the thing that you're going to find about this jury is they're really going to want to hear both sides. They're really going to be taking notes and listening to both sides of the story. Yes, we have the Me Too movement as young people, but at the same time, we do know people lie. We do know that there are women that are perpetrators of domestic violence as well. Um, so I think he really does have a good shot in this trial just based on the makeup of the jury alone. All right, Chanley, I keep talking about the Johnny Depp supporters who are inside that courtroom, and I keep saying they're women, women, women. Um, have you found a Johnny Depp supporter who is not a woman? I did today, Vinny. I'm in the gallery, I'm looking out, scoping out who's there, some of the same people every day. There was a young man, and what caught my attention, he has a great head of hair. <laughs> and uh, so I caught up with him afternoon break today and said, hey, would you kind of explain to us why you are here supporting Johnny Depp? So we talked to him, let's listen. I think it's cool because not much happens in Virginia. It's not every day that, you know, Johnny Depp comes. He's Captain Jack Sparrow, so I live close. I was like, why not? There's no point in not coming out. Not much is going on, so pretty much what's up. I don't know too much about the situation, but I grew up watching his movies, and he's been a hero to, like, me and, like, my family. Like, we've looked up to him and watched his movies since as long as I can remember. So I'm just here to support him, and... I just figured if I could play a part in having his back, even though I don't know if it means anything to him, but if it does, then it does. So, Vinny, that's Ethan Lannon. He's a local, mm -hmm. and he said he's going to be here frequently. He works at a job for cybersecurity, and he's, he has flexibility. He wants to come, and he wants to see Johnny Depp, but support him, and he doesn't care about the outcome. Yeah, but he said he wants to play a part in supporting Johnny Depp. He yeah. could play a part in, in, in the Pirates franchise. <laughs> That's what I thought. Just give him a puffy shirt. He's ready to go. Um, John, what are, you, what are your thoughts about the supporters of, of Johnny Depp? Do you think having a courtroom full of supporters at all impacts that jury do you think they see wow johnny depp's got a lot of fans here and is that going to make them uh look at look at this case one way or another because it's overwhelming it's absolutely overwhelming and obvious inside that courtroom yeah it's one of those things where it's a neutral field right it, it, neither one of them live in virginia right and so having a, a gallery full of your supporters it can make it feel like it's home court it can give you a sense of confidence that no matter what happens that everyone's going to be on your side right that the if the gallery's on your side then maybe perhaps then the jury's going to be on your side too but i do have to commend the the, the person that you that, that was just shown because we do want people to to be involved in the ju judicial system and watching these kinds of things and being a part of the whole process so in whatever way that takes i mean it's good for johnny depp yeah uh kyla let, let me ask you about that because that's the other part of this of this whole scene here is you talk to people no and i was at that coffee shop and and people didn't even know any of amber heard's movies so while we say they're both stars there is such a drastic difference in the level of star uh, is there a celebrity factor that gets won here by Johnny Depp, or is the fact that they are both great actors, both beautiful people, kind of neutralize each other? I think, well, one, I will have to say I've never heard of Amber Heard either, and I don't know if that gives me um, any bad opinions for any viewers, but I, I've never really heard of her. But I do think that, um, you know, the fact that they haven't heard of her may be helpful, um, or the fact that they don't know what's going on in Virginia, you know, right inside of the courtroom there might be a good thing, that it's not, um, it, it's a level playing field for both of them. But I think I heard you mention something about beauty, and I know that that will play a lot here. Unfortunately, stereotypes are that beautiful people are to be believed. So she does have that on her side, even if people might not necessarily know who she is um, from different movies. But I'm just hoping that the truth comes out here because if she was abusive towards him, I think we need to have more of a mu movement for men who have been abused. Um, we've had the Me Too movement, we've had things of that nature, but I don't really see a lot of times where we have people advocate for men in this situation if she's not telling the truth. All right, Kyla Coleman, John Delatore, thank you both so much. Appreciate your time, your insight, your expertise. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about some things happening here in Fairfax County that you didn't see on our cameras. That's next.
you 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 made an effort to make yourself available to Miss Heard to talk to you about issues she was having with your brother, correct? I'm, I'm <clears throat> excuse me, I made an effort to talk to her anytime I felt she needed to speak. Somebody's trying to call us. <laughs> It's kind of a pleasant ringtone. I, well, I didn't answer it, so. <laughs> I don't know. Fascinating moment. It was almost like it was like a made for a Hollywood scene and the music was playing. We we're getting ready to go to commercial or something. But that was the ringtone going off. Uh, welcome back, folks. We're here outside the Fairfax County Courthouse. I'm seated next to Chanley Painter. Chanley, give us a little more, uh, a few more details about that moment. Whose phone is that? That is the judge's cell phone. Oh. And what is so funny about this, because you've been in this courthouse, yeah. security everywhere. You can't have electronics inside this courtroom. And then if your phone goes off, you're kicked out so the judge broke her own rules and it was in a it was in a moment on cross where everything was so serious and then it was just a moment of levity that she's human too yeah absolutely and by the way a great judge yes. i mean i've been watching what she's been doing in that courtroom great judge makes the rulings decisive but lets the lawyers lawyer and, and that's my kind of judge all right let's talk about uh some of the things that our cameras aren't necessarily yes. picking up uh inside that courtroom and let's start with the media here at, at this courthouse you know, we've been to several trials with a lot of media from all over the world this is no exception we took our camera out and about to show our viewers what it's like on the lawn in front of the courthouse there's media Vinny, from all over the world camera after camera reporter after reporter i've met reporters from germany of course from the uk all over the nation here to catch these celebrities out front and to cover this trial uh is something that i guess the public really wants to know about absolutely it's a big story and as nick told us early in the program i mean that first trial huge uh and this one will be bigger with the telly the television and the cameras inside so let's talk about the courtroom itself the first time i walked in there i was su really surprised it was big huge. it reminded me of a, of a federal courthouse but without the marble right. uh can you walk us through the different parts of this courtroom and and, and you know specifically who is where and what they can see Exactly. Well, it is, it's a giant, probably one of the biggest that we've been in in court TV, 10 rows in the gallery, as you know, and it's a little bit of a unique setup. So there's a, there's a kind of a graph. You can see the jury box, Vinny. If you're sitting in the gallery, it's difficult to see the jury because they're kind of in this alcove. It, uh, yeah, it's like it, a little jury nook. A nook. That's a perfect term for the jury. So you really have to be sitting on the right side of the room to see the jury's reaction. And then you have the witness stand. Well, Depp is closest to the jury box. He's the plaintiff here. He's he's the one that filed this matter, carries a burden. And then Heard is on the far right side. But again, she faces a direction kind of towards the jury. So they have a almost a better view of her, I would think. Yeah, they're, they're facing directly so they're, they're going to be able to see Amber Heard and, and Johnny Depp, which is important. Um, finally, can you, can you tell us about this group, Never Fear Truth? Yeah, Vinny, today I was sitting inside the gallery, and I noticed a couple of the women sitting next to me were drawing artwork. So I inquired as to what they were drawing and why they were here. One was from Chicago, one was from Ohio, and they told me about Never Fear Truth. It's an organization, an art community that was founded by Johnny Depp himself. A lot of people may not know that he was actually an artist before becoming an actor or a musician. So let's take a look at what he has on his website. There's only so many years on this planet. More than uh, Bravo said, uh, life, is a, life is a bird song. John, life is a bird song. He's right. So that's Johnny Depp. He's in the art studio there, Vinny. Well, I spoke with Taylor. She traveled here to be here this week from Chicago, and she showed me what she was working on, her artwork, and why uh, it's so important to her to be here and, of course, to draw her photo. Let's watch. I feel like it'd be awesome to uh, give this to him as a thank you for all he like did for me just by taking that time to come out to meet me because yeah. it kind of... 
everything that I've pursued after that was like it was be kind of because of that moment because I honestly I didn't really like believe in myself and uh, was going through a lot at that time with like my family and stuff but just knowing that my hero like came out and was like wow I love your drawing like back then I'm like okay like meeting him was kind of like one of my biggest dreams ever so if I like if that happened am I able to do other stuff too so I did <laughs> and that's why I wanted to thank him with a, an a updated drawing now Vinny she told me she told me she picked that photo because it's like a fighting stance. He's fighting for his truth in court now. She's here to support him, and she hopes that somehow she can meet him and give him this drawing. She previously met him years before. He encouraged her in her artwork, and so it's just a big dream. And that's why she's here, and it's, it's just all over the world. She has a friend in Singapore, Never Fear Truth, who wishes she could be here as well. So I thought that was really interesting. Another part of everything that's happening inside this courtroom. Amazing stuff. Chanley Painter, thank you so much. All right, folks, when we come back, we've got another hour. We're going to bring in our think tank, break down some of the legal issues that battle inside the courtroom. You'll see and hear some more of the testimony and, and the surveillance video that was shown to the jury today. Don't go anywhere.
Tonight in Fairfax County, Virginia, the bitter battle between Johnny Depp and his ex Amber Heard continues as Johnny's lifelong friend Ike Baruch takes over the courtroom, recounting his days as Johnny and Amber's neighbor in an L.A. penthouse. When did you move into the Eastern Columbia building? The next day after we met and we talked the next day and describing the ugly details of Johnny and Amber's relationship I'm, I say to Amber as I'm walking up he hit you and she goes yeah he threw a phone at me and hit me and then facing a contentious cross-examination so many people are, have been affected by this malicious lie that she started and she created and it's gone out the door and around the world tonight we are live in fairfax county virginia with all the big moments from day two of johnny depp versus amber heard <laughs> I'm Vinny Politan. and we are live outside the courthouse in Fairfax County, Virginia. It's about 30 minutes outside of Washington, D.C. We are here because Johnny Depp has sued his ex, Amber Heard, for millions of dollars. She's counterclaimed and sued him for even more money. And it's all going back to their bitter, bitter relationship and breakup. They were married for a short time. Uh, they got divorced. They had a settlement. But now Johnny Depp has sued Amber Heard for defamation because she's accused him of domestic violence. And she has said, no, it's true. So she sued him for calling her a liar. And yeah, it's about defamation, but it's really about uh, domestic violence and, and what happened inside this home behind closed doors. And today this jury got an inside look uh, from someone very close to Johnny Depp and someone who for some time was close to Amber Heard as well. Johnny's friend, his name is Ike, and he and Johnny go way back to when they were teenagers. They were both met down in Florida. They were musicians and have known each other for years. Uh, but then back inside of each other's lives and at the point where Johnny Depp is married to Amber Heard, um, they're neighbors because Johnny Depp has a penthouse and another penthouse and another penthouse and another penthouse uh, on top of this beautiful building in Los Angeles. And he's got uh, friends and, and family that are living there in these penthouses. And, and one of them is his friend Ike, who's also an artist. It's his art studio. Uh, Johnny Depp giving him some money as well. But he was the second witness called by Johnny Depp today. And really, um, a man with a big personality. And you're watching him and you're listening to him and you, 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 know, you, know, you know this is a celebrity trial, but you might think, wait, do I know this guy from somewhere? Was he, was he on some show or something? Because he is that charismatic. I'm going to show you some of his testimony, a little bit of direct and a little bit of the cross. Mr. Bridge, during your time living at the Eastern Columbia building, did you develop a relationship uh, with the defendant in this case, Ms. Hurd? Yeah. And did you get along with Ms. Hurd? I loved her. I fell in love with her just like Johnny fell in love with her. They were always loving with each other. They treated each other like gold. Mr. Baruch, can you um, describe for the jury the events of the next day, May 22nd, 2016? Yes. Amber turns to me and she says, uh, Johnny came by last night, he got violent. I'm, I say to Amber as I'm walking up, he hit you? And she goes, yeah, he threw a phone at me and hit me. I don't see anything. I don't see a, a cut, a bruise, swelling, redness. It's just Amber's face. Mr. Bridge, how do you feel about what Mr. Depp has done for you? Objection. Well, you know what? No, I'll go ahead. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. I think, that's what, I think that's withdrawn. Go ahead. You can answer the question. Oh. How do you feel about everything that Mr. Depp has done for you? Oh, come on. This is, it's unreal. It's, you know, you think too much about it, you're going to cry. Now, you said that on the 22nd that you kissed her on the cheek. What day? Uh, the 22nd, your birthday? 22nd, Sunday, yes. Okay. What's your typical way of kissing women when you greet them or I say goodbye? Did, I'm not understanding any of what you just did. You, you peck her on the cheek pretty hard every time? Objection, Your Honor. No, I'll, I'll sustain the objection if you want the next question. Okay. Did you ever do a, a two-kiss when you greeted Amber? 
two cheeks? No, I'm not European. I'm from <laughs> Brooklyn. All right, let's go to the fake punch. I want to make sure that I understand exactly what you remember seeing. They're looking at each other, yapping or whatever they're doing, and Whitney goes like this. Pow. Just a, a fake pow. And then they both start laughing, and then they're just standing there. And you I think you testified already, you're pretty angry with Ms. Hurd, right? When? I, I wrote it down that you Oh, are... about all the phony, about the phony pictures what? that were that were taken and put in uh, tabloids, and about the fake narrative, and about, uh, and the way she's uh, try, uh, at trying to, got a, 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 a fraudulent DV claim to extort and blackmail uh, a man. Uh, yeah, that kind of got me uh, uh, pretty angry frustrated, confused, angry, upset. Yes, which is why I said the best thing for us to do is not to talk to each other. Yep. So many people are, have been affected by this malicious lie that she started and she created, and it's gone out the door and around the world. And, and for Johnny... John, you know, it's, his family has been completely wrecked by all of this stuff. And it's not, it's, it's, it's not, uh, it's not fair. It's not right what, ha what she did and what happened for so many people to get affected from this. It's... It's insane. And Mr. Baruch? This how this happened. Wow. I mean, I've seen a lot of witnesses through the years. Um, this one I'm going to remember. I'm going to remember forever. Um, I'm not European. I'm from Brooklyn. And it all came out inside that courtroom. Trust me, taking over the courtroom. The bottom line, though, is, is the jury going to believe him? Because if the jury believes his testimony, huge day for Johnny Depp. Let's bring in our experts, our legal think tank joining us tonight. Yes, in Atlanta, Georgia, criminal defense attorney Eklund Mercy is with us, although deep down, she's a Jersey girl. Also with us, yeah. Nima Romani, former federal prosecutor. He's in Los Angeles where all this stuff happens, right? And Kirk Nurmi the attorney who represented Jody Arias, who knows all about super high profile cases when the world is watching. Great to have you all here. Eklund, I'm gonna begin with you because you, your roots are the closest to Brooklyn, New York. Um, your thoughts about Ike. I like Ike. I'm admitting it tonight. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not delivering a I verdict on like this case. There's I a lot more to go. I was like, I should be your next best friend. I love him. It's either he should have an Oscar or it's the truth because that was persuasive. Um, he, it felt honest, you know what I'm saying? So he gave the good and the bad. He was very direct. I don't know. He was kind of like the perfect defense witness. Nima, your thoughts about Ike Baruch? Vinny, I liked him. I think Depp's team has started strong. I mean, these are going to be their best witnesses, right? First, they started with Christy. You know, she did a good job of dirtying Amber Heard up, and today they followed up with Ike. But let's not forget, Johnny Depp's already lost once, so this is a redo trial. A judge has ruled that he was Wait, 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 actually... wait, 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 wait. Time out, Nima. Time out, time out, time out. First hour of my program, I had a guest from across the pond who was at that first trial, <laughs> and he reminded us that it was one, one person who made that decision, and it was not an ordinary person. It was a professional. It was a judge. And you and I both know, all three of us, all four of us know, that judges sometimes can be a little jaded in the way they look at the world. <laughs> They're not real people sometimes. Right, Nima? Well, listen, I'm not saying Johnny can't win here, but the laws are more favorable okay. in Europe. And, it, and he lost that trial. So now the burden is on him, and he's come out strong. I'm not disagreeing with you. But what I also have to tell you is both Christie 
and Ike are on the payroll, right? They have every reason in the world to love Johnny Depp, just like those 50 fans who were there in the courtroom today. So we got to take all this with a grain of salt. Amber Heard has not put on her case. I expect it to be an equally strong case. So ultimately, this case is going to come down to likability and credibility. And again, this isn't a criminal case. So both Johnny and Amber will be testifying. We know that. We have all those text messages that have been subpoenaed to so all that Fifth Amendment privilege, attorney-client privilege. I mean, that's all gone out the door. So we're going to hear it all. And this is just the beginning. So let's not count our chickens if we're Johnny Absolutely. Depp's fans right now. No, no, we're not counting anything. we got a long way to go here. we got a long way to go. But this is a strong start, I think, for, for Johnny Depp. And you're right. He was on the payroll. Uh, was actually paid. He gave him a lot of dough. He literally said, yeah, he gave me some dough. You know, nice en envelope, five grand in it some dough. Kirk, I want you to take a listen to some more of the direct examination, and then I want to hear your analysis of, of this uh, witness. Uh, how powerful, how important, how persuasive uh, is he? Let's watch. She knocks on my door June 3rd, Friday, Friday, a Friday night, June 3rd. She knocks, I, she knocks on my door around 11 o'clock. Is, uh, is the next time that I see her. And what happened when she knocked on your door on June 3rd? I opened the door. I opened up the door and actually, you know, something I'll say is, hey, how you doing? You know, to say hello. So I open up the door and say, hey, how you doing? And she looks at me and she says, not feeling so hot that uh, I made some food. Would you like to come over and eat with me? And at that point, after, you know, everything I've seen, I looked at her and I said, listen, me and you, we're not going to talk anymore. After everything that I've just seen all week long from, from the past couple, past week and change, you, uh, listen, I'm confused, I'm angry, and I'm frustrated by everything that I've seen. And that I think the best thing is for me and you that we don't talk anymore. Did That's, you say anything in response? Yes. she. In response to that, she looks at me and she says, I told Johnny I don't want anything. The lawyers are making me do all, all of this. And I, you know, that's what she said. Kirk Narmi, that last part, the lawyers are making me do all of this. Your thoughts? Well, it certainly makes her sound insincere, right? I mean, I doubt her lawyers are forcing her to do some of the things she's claiming you're doing, but it makes her sound insincere. It makes her sound untrustworthy. And this is important testimony, I think, because the Depp team is going to try to cast Miss Hurd is someone who was trying to attach herself to Johnny Depp's star, who really didn't have the star power he did. She attached herself to it, and then when he she was thrown off, she got tried to get back on by accusing him of, of domestic violence. And we see her in that little suit there casting herself as a victim of domestic violence. That's how her attorneys are going to cast her, whether she is or not. So this is how she wants to cast herself, and it just doesn't make it's inconsistent with that casting, that testimony. Eklund, take a listen to some more of the cross-examination and, and let me know if you think he's holding up well. Do you recall Mr. Depp telling you that uh, this was Amber's fault and referring to her as a Well, it's written there, so uh, yeah, I could see that. Okay. It's, it's, if, that well, I don't, that's not what he says. He says that ruins such a cool life we had for a while. I don't know. That's and he not, says, I can't even look at the building anymore, correct? Right, I can't even right. look at the building and he's anymore. It, right? Exactly. So, Eklund, there's text messages between Johnny and, and Ike, and they're, you know, bad mouthing Amber at that point, but this is after the after the breakup has begun. Yeah, this is this is why I don't do family law. Divorces can get nasty. And when you're getting divorced, you get nasty. And then after the divorce, like during the divorce, you're nasty. After the divorce, you're nasty. They are inseparable. I know, like, kudos to all my family law attorneys because they understand that this is what happens. 
you know, family courts all over the land have terrible text messages between friends, and it's normal. So I don't see how they're going to use that against Johnny Depp. Nima, your, your thoughts, because Johnny, I mean, in some of those messages, it's nasty, vile stuff that he's saying about Amber. It is post-breakup time. Uh, does the jury hold that against him? Does the jury look at Johnny Depp differently? I think they do. I think they're really bad messages, and that's why Amber Heard's team has included them in every filing. I mean, setting aside the vile words, we're talking about acts of violence, the corpses, sexual acts. I mean, this is bad stuff, both to Ike, to Paul Bettany. I mean, all of this nastiness is going to come out, and I agree with Eklund. Really, this is a family law case that's gone too far. But the other area I think the defense did a good job on cross-examination is the drug and alcohol abuse. I don't think the first two witnesses did a good job of either explaining it or their own text messages saying, hey, I'm concerned about Johnny, he's on a bender, he's using too much. So I think the defense scored some points there as well, Vinny. I, I you know, uh, Kirk, this case, go ahead, Eklund. I just have to add something. With regards to the text messages, understand that these are not normal people. These are Academy Award winning people for their wit and their humor and their comedy some dark comedy and it's between friends so for them to go into the depths it's reasonable because that's what they are and of course they're artists so i can't you know um i do believe that during jury duty if the attorneys did a good job that we would have somebody who understands the voices and also understands how wit and humor are played that's it yeah, but it's also anger Kirk, let me let me ask Eklund. you something, Kirk. Uh, sorry, Neem, I didn't hear you. No, it's also anger and rage. So you can try to explain it away, but this is not no, a Disney but actor. What, but I mean, that's what happens yeah. in divorces. It's anger and rage, but it's going to be on Adderall because they're artists and actors. Like, this is... The, you know what the, I mean? They, the, this they sounds like excusing things. violent behavior. Boys will be boys. So I'm not saying it's, no, it's not, not possible boys. that that if herd is regular, fabricating this, but it, like but you shouldn't explain away violent boys sexual boys, text messages regarding your ex-wife. He ex -wife. sounds like I mean, Joe just, Pesci. He sounds like Joe Pesci. I love yeah, him. Yeah, and we know what we Joe Pesci did in Goodfellas and Casino. Vinny. This is real life. So I mean, this is real life no, where this is your ex-wife. And what I'm saying is, is that we we have to put in context that it wasn't like an actual act. These are text messages between friends who never thought they were going to see the light of day, trying to make their other friend feel good about his divorce. No, Johnny Depp gotcha. is saying great insight by both about of his you. Nima, I'm cutting you off. I have to cut you off just because we have to get to the next segment. Um, when we come back. We've got some uh, brand new video to show you from inside the courtroom today. Surveillance video from the key date in this entire uh, case, which is May 21st, 2016, from inside the building. We'll show it to you next.
America. Did you ever tell any officers at your house on May 21, 2016, that the that Johnny Depp had ever done anything wrong to you that night or before? You're asking me if I've told them? If you told them on he, May 21, yes. Again, I said to them, I declined to give any statement at this time as per the advice of my counsel. Did the police they did make a comment to me about it seeming unsafe. That's why they needed to check the apartment. They made uh, a gesture to my face. They said that I looked hurt. They also pulled um, me aside and said, Look, just say, just say a statement. We can make sure you're safe. Just say a statement, or give us a statement, and we'll get the guy. And they said the exact same thing to Josh. Did, is it your testimony that a police officer on May 21 yes. told you that it appeared you looked hurt? Uh, he just, uh, he or she gestured, I can't remember which one, to my face and said, it's, we can tell you've been hurt or you don't look good or something to that effect, but I don't remember the exact words they used. But something to that effect? Yes. Yeah. That's Amber Heard from her deposition from her divorce case. Talking about that day, May 21st, 2016, that's when, you know, it hit the fan. That was the date. That was the official date. That's when everything fell apart between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. But what happened that day is in question. Depends who you ask. If you ask Johnny Depp's uh, people, he just went there, said he wanted a divorce, and left. Amber Heard said she was abused that day, but police did show up. And today, the jury saw some of the surveillance video from inside the building where they lived of the officers arriving on that day. Let's take a look at it. There you see 5-0, LAPD entering. That's the lobby area, May 21st, 2016. Important important witnesses to all of this because they're the ones there, they're neutral parties. What did they see? What did they hear? What did they observe? Really crucial in this case. Absolutely crucial. And there were actually two sets of officers. There were the first officers arrived and the second ones who arrived. Uh, but this looms large, looms large in this case. Our think tank is still with us as we're watching this video. We've got Nima Romani, Kirk Nurmi, Ekla Mercy with us. Kirk, let me ask you, how important do you think these officers will be when they testify about what they saw, what they observed on May 21st, 2016? I think they're going to be huge because they're contemporaneous witnesses. They were right there on the day in question, at the time in question, as you pointed out. But also, they're going to be objective, right? You could be pointed out they are the objective, neutral witnesses. They don't have a relationship with Mr. Depp. They don't have a relationship with Ms. Heard. They're simply responding to what they believe is a domestic violence call. Now, what they said, if anything, that you know, contradicts what Ms. Heard said in her deposition, I think that's going to be huge because, again, if the dev team is going to call her, there's going to probably going to be some space between what she said and what the cops are going to say, and that is going to really cast Ms. Heard in a bad light. All right, let's let's watch together now. We've got some videos of Amber Heard in the building, and, and you're going to see their different dates. This is between the time of the alleged attack on May 21st and when she finally goes and reports it six days later. So as we're watching this video, uh, you don't get a close-up of her face, uh, but uh, here, this is a little bit closer. What, what are you seeing here, Eklund, as we watch this video? Does this look like someone? <laughs> and, and that date is a few days later. Um, are you seeing anything that this jury's gonna believe she's uh, been beaten up? This is bad for her. This does not look good. and. It's not, it, yeah, this does not look good. And the fact that she's not, um, we've seen her on the stand get emotional, but we don't have the same emotion in any of the, in any of the videos. So it's going to be a hard, it's going to be a hard hill to climb because this, this looks bad for her. This looks bad. Now, there's another video that we've heard a lot about. They call it the fake punch video, Nima. It's where uh, Amber Heard and her friends are kind of doing like this fake reenactment of, of, of what may have happened. There was a video of it, but apparently that video doesn't exist anymore. There was testimony about that today. Let's listen. Is it your testimony that, that, that this exists? 
this footage exists or not? It would no longer exist. And it would no longer exist, and it was never produced as one of the 87 clips? Is that right? That is correct. And I believe you testified earlier that attorneys for both sides selected times and looked through video and made selections of what to preserve. Is that, is that, was that your testimony? Yes, that's correct. But nobody selected that footage? To your knowledge? Not to my knowledge, no. And it was never produced? Not to my knowledge, no. Um, and is it correct that, that, uh, that you do not recall at that time whether Amber had any signs of injury? At this moment, no, I do not recall. And according to that comment, you did not recall at that time. Is that your understanding? I don't recall. And you don't know the date or the time of that footage? Don't recall, and obviously I could read this, but I, I don't recall offhand. And you didn't recall at the time either. Is that right? That's correct. Okay, Nima, so we're talking about this so-called fake punch video, which I think Depp's team wanted to use to show that this whole thing was staged, it was made up, there was no real domestic violence, they were joking and laughing about it afterwards, but the video doesn't exist. So what does that mean? Well, I testified about it, right? So Depp did get the evidence in. Obviously, nothing's better than the actual video, and it sounds like either it was a spoliation issue or the attorneys dropped the ball, and they didn't think it was important, and now they do, and they're trying to bring it into the case. But, you know, to go to Eklund's point, how hurt is acting three to four days later? Look, it may not be consistent with the victim of domestic violence, but it's also not inconsistent. I mean, I've prosecuted many, many of these cases, and how someone acts days later doesn't necessarily, with different people or friends, there's oftentimes where victims, they don't share that they were beat up with their girlfriends, right? Again, it's not inconsistent with the fabrication, and it's not consistent with it. It really doesn't move the needle one way or the other, in my opinion. Kirk, what do you think if this jury believes that there was this video existed and that Amber Heard and her friends are doing this whole fake punch scenario? Um, do you think that that bolsters Depp's claim that all this is being made up and it's kind of like a joke? They're laughing about it, but it then became very serious? Yeah, I think it certainly bolsters Depp's case. Like Nima said, the, the, the evidence came in. I mean, I could, uh, who is a very believable witness, even though he had the ties came in and testified to this video, seeing this video, but also we combine that act, that that fake punch video, with the video we just saw of her in the elevator with her friends, maybe collecting some of her stuff. This is different, I would challenge Nima on this point. This is different because Amber heard somebody who could bring security with her, who could bring somebody, if she's been attacked by this man, wouldn't she bring two security guards with her to help protect her, not a couple of girlfriends to walk away with a box of stuff? It's different. She's an atypical victim of domestic violence, if she even is one. And in that regard, she's not showing much seriousness or much concern for being in that building and i think that's the part that you combine that with the fake punch it really doesn't look good for miss hurt at that point in time now um at some point we're gonna have testimony from these officers at some point there's body cam footage from the second set of officers who showed up so we're gonna get more details about exactly how Amber Heard looked, how she acted, what the officers thought of all of it. But uh, the, the bottom line here, Ekla Mercy, is when police responded, no one ended up getting arrested. Yeah, yeah, and here's the thing. This is not a criminal trial, it's a civil trial. And in law school, we were taught, never ask a question you don't know the answer to. And let me tell you, Depp's attorneys are ready. They are locked and loaded. So they obviously know that these uh, officers have the smoking gun. And I am here for all of it. It is like no holds barred. I don't know what they did across the pond, but in Virginia, justice is being served. It's brilliant to watch. Um, with regards to the video with the fake punch, 
I loved her questioning because she is basically saying that there was a video, but because none of the attorneys thought any any of that footage was important, not even her attorney felt that it was important enough to even select as evidence, and then suddenly it disappeared. So I think that that was moving evidence for Mr. Depp, and I think that um, Amber Heard should be trying to um, at least trying to settle at this point. I just based off what uh, what I've seen so far, I would have settled. I would have settled. Yeah, I don't think this is about money, though. No. I think this is personal. No. This whole <laughs> trial is personal. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. It's like the worst divorce ever. <laughs> Yeah, it's the divorce that never ends. The think tank staying with us, folks. So we got a lot more to get to. We're on some verdict watches. We'll let you know the latest there. But it is a beautiful night here in Fairfax County, Virginia. We are live outside the courthouse. Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard.
Ticketmaster.com. All right, folks, we have some breaking news tonight. Um, I'm here in Fairfax, Virginia, but of course here at Court TV, we're covering trials across the nation. So let's bring in Court TV legal correspondent Joy Lim Nakrin, who is in the studio. I'm covering the two big Hollywood stars here. We have breaking news concerning another award-winning Hollywood star. That's right, and this is concerning actor Cuba Gooding Jr. He has now pleaded guilty to forcibly touching a woman. So this guilty plea comes three years after this incident at a New York nightclub. He's 54 years old. He's been accused of violating three different women at various Manhattan night spots in 2018 and 2019, but is pleading guilty to just one of the allegations right now. He told the judge that he kissed the waitress on her lips without consent. The Oscar-winning Jerry Maguire star was also arrested in 2019 after a 29-year-old woman told police that he squeezed her breast without her consent. And a few months later, he was charged in the two additional cases as more women accused him of abuse. Now, his attorneys argue overzealous prosecutors caught up in the fervor of the Me Too movement are trying to turn what they describe as, quote, commonplace gestures or misunderstandings into crimes here. Uh, but obviously some pretty serious allegations and he's pleaded guilty to them. Yeah, I thought for sure that was going to be a trial. It's not. So um, let's talk about a case that is a trial. Uh, Nancy Brophy, the novelist, the writer who wrote the essay, How to Murder Your Husband, on trial for allegedly murdering her husband. What's going on? That's right, Vinny. So it's day seven now in Oregon versus Nancy Brophy. And remember, we told our viewers here on Court TV that Nancy stood to gain some $1.5 million in insurance and workers' comp benefits from her husband's death. Well, today, the jury got to hear all about that. The state called a life insurance expert who broke down all six life insurance policies that Nancy had taken out on her husband. Now, following Dan Brophy's death, Nancy even asked a police detective for a letter saying that she's not a suspect in his death so that she could collect the life insurance. Well, today, the jury got to hear from that detective. And during his testimony, that conversation was introduced. Uh, I don't want to be the stupid question of the day, but I think I need to be the stupid question of the day. Uh, so okay. my insurance company said, well, just have the detective write a letter that you're no longer a suspect. And I said, man, I just don't know that he's there. Uh, and I'm not sure that he looks at that way. But if you do, I'd get you to write the letter. My sister, when I told her this as a lawyer, laughed so hard she fell out of the chair. So. Why? Why? <laughs> because. Why would you need that? Because they don't want to pay if it turns out that I secretly went down to the school and shot my husband because I thought, Hey, going into old age without Dan after 25 years, it's really what I'm looking for, you know? <laughs> okay. Right, well, so. we... We never would do something like that. I, I, did, I really didn't think so. Yeah, I mean, that's not something that we, I, I, we never we never do something like that. That's never been done. I've never heard of that being done. Remember that we actually got to hear that and the jury got to hear that in opening statements, but then they got to hear all the context and they got to hear from the man who was on the other side of that recording. Now, prosecutors have pointed out that while the couple was $6,000 behind in their house payments, they paid out $16,000 in insurance premiums that same year, Vinny. Wow. That's a little unusual, a right. little suspicious. So uh, we'll, we'll keep our eye on what's happening out there. Meantime, uh, we're on a double verdict watch for the Olympian and the doctor. What's the latest tonight? Yeah, two verdict watches right now. So the first one is for the former Olympic equestrian who was accused of attempted murder. And the jury started their day by seeing the three hour long playback of testimony by defense psychiatrist, Dr. Steven Simmering. They asked to see that testimony again, perhaps because it was confusing at times. Dr. Simmering testified that Barrison, Michael Barrison, had depression and also suffered from delusions. He said the depression did not prevent Barrison from understanding right from wrong, but the delusions did. You would agree with me that depression disorder does not affect a person's ability to know right from wrong? Well, counsel, that's a complex question. There are all kinds of 
of levels of depression. Uh, I diagnosed it with persistent depressive disorder, which used to be called the DSM-4 um, dysthymia, and prior to that used to be called minor depression or neurotic depression. It basically is a serious condition. It can lead to suicide, but it is not usually accompanied by psychosis. On the other hand, there are major depression disorders which can involve psychosis and delusional thinking. But that's not my diagnosis. So in this case, your, your diagnosis of depression would not have affected Michael Barrison's ability to know right from wrong? That is correct. Uh, I'm sorry, not directly. I think the uh, chronic depression made him more vulnerable to uh, be affected by all of these events, but it would not lead directly to his ability to know right from wrong, no. So in this case, your, your diagnosis of depression would not have affected Michael Barrison's ability to know right from wrong? That is correct. Uh, I'm sorry, not directly. I think the uh, chronic depression made him more vulnerable to uh, be affected by all of these events, but it would not lead directly to his ability to know right from wrong, no. Now, the jury asked also for the exact dates that each psych psychiatric or psychological expert actually evaluated Michael Barrison, who, of course, claims that he was driven temporarily insane by his tenants before shooting one of them and attempting to shoot the other one. Now, we're also in verdict watch in the case of an Ohio doctor who's charged with murder for administering fentanyl in doses that turned out to be deadly. Dr. William Husel is charged with 14 counts of murder related to those overdoses. And today, jurors asked to see an exhibit that the defense entered during openings. They weren't allowed to actually see it because it's not considered evidence being in opening statements. They did get to see a defense exhibit that they requested, which had the dates laid out. Um, used in, in the questioning of a particular physician. Defense attorney Jose Baez is claiming that Husel was simply trying to relieve the pain of his patients and is just being used as a scapegoat for systemic failures at Mount Carmel Health System. So again, we are awaiting two verdicts that could really happen uh, perhaps anytime tomorrow, uh, if not before the end of the week, Vinny. Well, you know about Fridays, Joy. Yeah. A lot of, days, a lot of time or the day. You know, Jose Baez, we'll see if his magic is, is still there in, in finding these not guilty verdicts. And really interesting to see Dr. Simring again after all these years. Was a former regular of mine on Court TV. That's because when I was a lawyer, I used him as a witness. And I'll tell you this about his credibility. When you hire Dr. Simring, he says, I'm not promising you any result. He's not a hired gun. Mm. You, you hire him and he tells you uh, what he truly believes, whether it's good for you or bad for you. So uh, that's why I always trust uh, his opinions. Yeah, that makes but him more that credible. That being said, Joy, absolutely. And, and it usually translates to the jury. They usually believe uh, what, he's, what he testifies to. Joy, great to see you. Thanks for staying on top of everything for us, keeping the seat warm. <laughs> uh, we'll talk again tomorrow night. Thanks so much. Thank you, Vinny. All right, when we come back, time to hear from you, the 13th juror, and it's all about the big witness today in Fairfax County, Virginia. Johnny Depp's really good friend. Um, did you believe Ike? Your verdict next.
you feel about everything that Mr. Depp has done for you? Oh, come on. This is, it's unreal. Yeah, it's, you know, uh, you, you think too much about it, you, you're gonna cry. That uh, I appreciate everything that he's done for me. Um, you know, I, I, it's like stuff you can't pay back. Would you lie for him under oath? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I love that reaction. And that was my question to you. Did, did you believe uh, Ike Baruch today, Johnny Depp's good friend on the stand? Because if the jury believes him, huge day today for Johnny Depp. We begin with our 13th juror comment of the day. It comes from Beth. Uh, Bev, not Beth, Bev. I believed him. Didn't seem like there was one fake bone in this guy's body. He tells it like it is. Kirk Nurmi, would you love to have this witness on your side? You bet. I'd love to hang out with him. I'd love to have lunch with him. And, you know, it, it did come across as real believable. I, I agree with Bev. I mean, even when he was questioned about what Johnny had done for him, he wasn't uh, defensive. His response was sincere. And when she said, you know, would you lie under oath? Oh, come on. He just blew it off. Like, that is ridiculous. I think that also came across as a sincere uh, New York kind of response, if you will. And I think the jury was buying into everything Ike had to say. Yeah, I, I, if we were in Brooklyn, it'd be a no-brainer, but we are in Fairfax <laughs> County, Virginia, and we'll see how Brooklyn plays here, right? Um, Julie tonight, she says no. Johnny gave him a lot of money to shut him up, that's clear. And he admitted, uh, Eklund, that he was paid money, and, and he, you know, he actually gave him some dough, a lot of dough, like $100,000 worth of dough. Well, he's a, he's a millionaire. He could do that. So I don't. I think that if you explain where the hundred thousand um, in comparison to how much he actually uh, has or what his actual um, income is, I think uh, the jury will be able to see that. If it's like a hundred k is a drop in a bucket for this man, it it may be reasonable. Yeah, and it, it was given to him in such a Brooklyn way by Johnny Depp. It was, yeah. It's probably from his time as I Donnie mean, Brasco. He's, Donnie he's given him five grand yeah, in an he's envelope. Donnie Brasco. <laughs> five grand in an envelope. So, right? I, I would do, uh, like, I just, <laughs> just as friends, I would do that. Like, if I, I mean, if, I mean, just to be, like, funny about it, you definitely would do that just for the story. Like, I could see him telling the story like he gave it to me in a bag like I he's Donnie Rasco so I don't see a problem with it. here's Natasha yes I absolutely believe him uh, he maybe is his friend but won't lie on the stand for either of them he was friends with Johnny first but also became friends with Amber um, let me ask you this uh, Nima how much of how much of the fact that a guy like Johnny Depp right bigger than big star out in la la land with you the land of teslas right um mm -hmm. you got two in your garage i know um <laughs> but his friends with a guy like this he's friends with a guy like this like he remained friends with him like johnny depp didn't get too big for his friend ike from back in the day well look Vinny, it's his friend from the viper room right it's not his friend from brooklyn right this guy runs one of his businesses and he liked his art and he moved him into his house and he's living there rent free so he's part of the entourage all these actors have it and Eklund is it's a fugazi that's the reference we gotta use from john <laughs> donnie Braska. but really Vinny, i think none of this matters because it's going to come down to johnny and amber's testimony it's really this is all kind of the preview or the undercard we're getting excited because what they have to say on the stand is really going to make or break this case sarah tonight i think he was trying to make his buddy look good i don't think he was lying but i also don't think the jury will buy what he's selling because of the way he tried to oversell it so i don't know if he oversold it but by the way folks a great job tonight as always eklund mercy nima romani and kirk nermy great to have you on the program thanks so much we'll see you again really really soon uh, we've got a little more to get to here folks live from fairfax county i am vinnie politan don't go anywhere i've got something for you to do for me a little favor tonight <laughs>